So this is just a RBC, this is another RBC and so on. RBCs would start coming in, then proteinaceous material, so exudate will start appearing in here. Why would the exudate start coming in? Because the inflammation would cause the local congestion, the, the blood vessels will become dilated and they would bring in more blood flow will increase in those areas and so that would cause transudate to appear and so now the alveoli are actually filled. Now remember we are talking inside the alveoli, we are not talking outside. So alveoli are now filled and this is called consolidation, consolidation. Now if this consolidation happens for one complete lobe, then this will be called lobar pneumonia. And normally the right lower lobe and right middle lobe, lower part of the middle lobe is mostly involved. Guess why? Why would the right lower lobe and middle lobe be involved? I think you know the answer. Do you know where the foreign body goes? <laughs> normally foreign bodies normally go to the right lower lobe and, and the lower parts of the middle lobe because of the angulation rather straightness of the bronchi on the right side. It is the same mechanism here. When we aspirate the pathogens, they tend to go on the right side and lower lobe and lower part of the middle lobe is affected more. That is why lobar pneumonia would occur here. On the other hand, if this pathology starts in a way where first the bronchi themselves are affected, the bronchial walls are damaged, and then after the wall is damaged, then the nearby alveoli become necrosed and damaged. So damage starts with the bronchial walls and bronchiolar walls and then it spreads onto the nearby tissue. So it did not start from the alveoli. Here the damage is starting from the alveoli and spreading out. Here the damage or the infection starts at the walls of the bronchi and then moves out. This is called the bronchopneumonia and this can involve more than one lobes. Normally patchy areas of the lung parenchyma and the alveoli near the airway walls. That is a kind of distribution that you would see. Here you would see one complete lobe getting consolidated. One more thing is that as the pathology starts progressing and as these things start filling up, what would happen is, remember there are pores of con, pores of con, which would allow the infiltrate to move from one alveolus to the next alveolus. So even if this becomes all fibrosed, that fibrosed material would also involve more than one alveoli. So this is the, this is the process that is happening here. So of course the neutrophils are here, macrophages are here, fibrinaceous material is there, proteinaceous material is there, pathogen itself is present there, some dead cells are present there, so this is the congestion. Then we move on to the red hepatization. Hepatization, hepa, hepatic means liver-like or liver. Red hepatization means now the alveoli or the area of the lung is red in color and the consistency of the area of the lung which is infected is hepatic and liver-like consistency. So what is happening now is that again this thing is filled but now there are lots of RBCs present here. There is lots of fibrin present here in addition to what cells? Neutrophils of course. So let us make some neutrophils here. Neutrophils, some macrophages, pathogen itself, the pneumococci and this all is filled, filled with the transudates and exudates. And now the pus is forming, pus is forming as well. What is pus? The, the broken cells, the debris, the exudates, the transudates and then the bacterial uh, material, all that is forming pus. So if this patient is now cuffing things, what are he, what is he going to cuff? He is going to cuff sputum which is productive, which is yellowish in color, green, green, green in color or even hemoptysis might occur depending upon how much damage and how much bleeding is happening 
okay so from red hepatization will reach the gray hepatization what would happen that's a few days later and what is the gray hepatization rbc's will become damaged and lysed and disappear so the red color donated by the rbc's presence will go away and the rest of the material is present there so we have we have lots of fibrin we have broken up and dissolved rbc's we have neutrophils still present here we may actually now start getting some mononuclear cells as well but lesser plasma and and, and the uh, t cells but less in number macrophages are still present as well so when this consolidated part loses rbc's it is still hepatized that means the consistency is still liver like however the color becomes gray primarily because of the dissolution of the rbc's then starts the resolution so resolution is a normal outcome ideally all pneumonias should reach the resolution and what is that the cells here the macrophages would start eating up and digesting the substances present over here the phagocytosis would occur neutrophils would do that macrophages would do that and the debris will either would there are three three things that can happen number 1 the lysed debris the lys broken up pieces of this material now can either be absorbed that is one or macrophages would engulf them and then macrophages will be brought out through the mucociliary elevator and sputum or we will swallow them so they'll be present in phlegm or sputum or we'll swallow those that is why sputum test is important because sputum test will show the presence of the pathogen and the other cells there what uh, what else can happen fibrosis and scarring can happen here so as a result of that that organization remember whenever we talk about organization in the inflammatory process that would mean that the fibrous material there has become consolidated and stayed there forever or for long time and it has become organized so let's say this is a plaque that has developed and this plaque is going to stay there now so that is organization and of course complete resolution will be all of this has taken away and the alveolus has become normal that is the normal behavior so that is the resolution can the complications occur with this process yes so if you see here there are a bunch of complications that can occur if the fourth stage of resolution does not properly appear or if other stages become more prevalent so what will happen think about it guys so look we have the alveolus that is filled with the proteinaceous material we have pathogen we have local inflammation we have damage happening here so damage would occur to the alveoli and to the parenchyma what kind of complications we can see number 1 abscesses so i'm going to go from here up as well so abscesses so what would that be there is necrosis of the tissue and that necrosis will cause abscess formation so this was the normal tissue the tissue got so extensively damaged that the whole thing become necrosed that necrosed tissue will be picked up by whom macrophages would come in they will eat up all of this and the end result is that the the bronchial tree here will have a big abscess present in this area so what happened to the tissue here the tissue is gone necrosed and removed so that is one then we can have empyema what happens is the lobar pneumonia has a higher chance of causing empyema or involving pleura so once the pleura is involved as well remember there is visceral pleura and parietal pleura so once the pleura is involved as well then it is possible that there is empyema that would develop so that is two pleural consolidation can occur as well pleural plaques can occur as well 